All right. Um, today I wanted to talk about, um, we're going to start out talking about light traps. What does it mean to be a light trap? Well, what does it mean to be black? Uh, this looks black. Why is it black? Well, it's because it's, it doesn't reflect as much light. If nothing reflects back, then it looks black. And so you can try to find blacker things, right? This is, this is black, uh, partly because it's black anodized and partly because it has kind of grooves cut in it and that kind of breaks up the light from, from reflecting back to you. You can think of uh, black velvet. It's a real soft material, has a lots of nooks and crannies. It's got, a, it's got a, a way for the light to like filter down in, but then it doesn't, it has a hard time coming back out. Okay, well, what if you wanted to build like a perfect light trap? Um, well, one of the things that I did in optics land, and my boss actually taught me this, was to take a whole bunch of razor blades and then connect them all. So this is a cross section of the razor blades. And so you have all these really, really sharp points, okay? Now, if you just kind of zoom in on one of these, okay, here are these two razor blades, and the light comes in, it'll bounce around in there, and it'll kind of kind of go down, way down in that little crack there, and it just won't, it just won't come back out. And uh, it will look black, okay? And I've made up a, an example of that here. I've got a whole bunch of, um, you can see that I've got a whole bunch of exacto blades all kind of like bunched up together. And yeah, that's black. Uh, it, it, it looks much blacker in person, but yeah, bl trust me, it's black. Um, so yeah, the sharper the points, the better. And the longer the points, I guess, the better and stuff like that. But anyway, you can make light traps. So this is called a light trap. And you use them actually in optics for quite a few things. You use them in projection displays and a bunch of other things. But sometimes you just want to kill kill the light. Um, if you've ever worked in a um, laser lab, there are light traps. And uh, the laser uh, light traps are basically uh, kind of a, a kind of a thing that looks like this with a hole in it. Okay, there's a hole in it. And if you want to kill your laser beam, the laser comes in here and then it never comes out. Well, what's inside this thing? Well, it's got a whole bunch of uh, kind of slots in the walls so it has a hard time coming back out it won't it won't reflect off a wall there's nothing here to reflect off of and then a lot of times it has has a pointy thing in the in the middle of it so there's no direct path back out if the light comes in it'll bounce at an angle and then it'll get caught in one of these other uh baffles here okay so this is a really fancy baffle and you can you can buy these things. <laughs> They're expensive too. Everything in optics land is expensive, but yeah, a light trap, light, a whole bunch of light traps, right? Well, let's talk about um, let's talk about waveguides. All right. And so here's here's a waveguide, and a waveguide is basically a tube, right? It's got a, it's got a hole, and the and the radio waves bounce around in there. The EM wave bounces around in there. So let's take a look at that. So Here's a, uh, oops, let me move you guys back down. Okay, so here's a waveguide and the, and, the, and the radio waves are kind of wiggling around in there. There's a boundary condition where the uh, E field has to be zero at the boundaries and the H, anyway, there's a bunch of things going on here. And anyway, the, 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 the actual um, half wavelength of the, uh, wave needs to fit with it. That's why the, the, the waveguides come in different sizes, depending on what frequency range you have. They have to fit in here or a multiple or something like that. Something has to fit in here, right? So let's say that the radio wave is zipping along here and you want to extinguish it. Well, guess what? You can do this kind of light trappy thing, right? What's the difference between light and radio waves? Nothing. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, they come in here and they go bouncy, 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 and they die, right? And uh, you can imagine that maybe this material is also RF absorption, has an RF absorption profile. So it's not metal, maybe it's uh, uh, copper, or not copper, maybe it's uh, uh, carbon, right? Maybe car a carbon-based thing would be a good absorber right, to have this made out of. Anyway, um, yeah, so if you wanted to make a 
RF trap. This would be an RF trap, right? We talked about light traps. This is like an RF trap. All right. So why would we want one of these things? Well, let's say that we're um, just wanting to kill the light, uh, kill the light, kill the RF. Um, well, what is that? Well, that's called the dummy load, right? We have a, we can have a connector on our dummy load. It comes into a resistor and then it goes to ground and that might, might all be in a box, right? And that's a dummy load. The RF comes in, but it never comes out. Well, it looks like a lot like that. That's a dummy load also. The RF comes in and it never comes out. So this thing and this thing are doing the exact same job, right? And so um, in order to not have things reflect back, in this case, you needed a 50 ohm resistor to have the impedance correct and everything. Well, if you design this correctly, it's 50 ohm impedance coming into this thing, and then it's infinite impedance going out of that thing. It just, the impedance starts at 50 ohms here, and then just goes to infinity by the time you get to here. And remember, it would have to take a round trip. So whatever attenuation you have going in, you have that attenuation coming out as well. So yeah, so dummy loads, these traps, kind of the same thing. Let's talk about another device that I've talked about. Uh, you might have a connector here, you might have a connector here, and you might have a connector here, and then you have something that looks like this, and a 50 ohm load. What is that? Well, it's a coupler, remember? You get some uh, coupling between the, the fields, and so when you have uh, a radio wave go, going back and forth here, you get a little bit coupled in here. And you want to make sure that it acts kind of like a one-way valve. If it goes if it goes this direction, you just want to kind of kill it. And that's why there's a 50 ohm load here. And then if you want to go this direction, then it comes out on a connector, okay? So when you want to build a coupler, you want one where it just comes back out. You want one where it kills, where it kills the uh, radio wave. Well, what if we used one of these to kill the radio wave, okay? All right, so here we have a big, uh, a big coupler. It's for a particular size waveguide, okay? Take the cap off here so there's, uh, you can see all the way through it if you're, yeah, you can see all the way through. And I've showed this before. I had a video on a bigger version of this. This is a smaller one, but yeah, this is a coupler. So we have a straight through path, and then we have a uh, path at an angle coming out. And what's missing? the resistor over here. We need a resistor on this side. Remember, this is the through, and then this is the couple part, and then you need a resistor over on this side. Well, the resistor's in here. Let's, let's take them out. Um, see if he's 50 ohms. Okay. This one's hell. I wanted to show it on the big one I've got, but it, it's all attached and you can't take it apart. But this one you can take apart. So, um, let me uh, take out our 50 ohm resistor. All right, let me zoom you guys down a bit. All right, there we go. We'll take out the resistor. Uh, we'll take out the resistor. All right, it only comes out one way. I have to be careful here. There we go, turn it. There we go, there's our resistor. <laughs> what is it? It's a sharp thing. <laughs> it's a pointy sharp thing. Okay, and that pointy sharp thing sits inside the uh, sits inside the waveguide, and it kills the RF. It's an RF sing, uh, trap, All right? Now I'm not sure what this is made out of. It's non-conductive. I, I I think it's probably some type of carbon, uh, but I'm not sure. If people know, comment below. But it's some type of RF absorber. I mean, maybe something like a ferrite. Um, it, it it doesn't. Eh, maybe it feels like ferrite. Yeah, it could be f something like a ferrite. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's real pointy and it's real sharp. Um, you want it very, very pointy so there's no reflections off that little tip there. But that's what's inside this thing. That This is the 50 ohm load. Not really 50 ohm load, it's just a trap. It kills all of the RF uh, that goes into this thing. Yeah. Let's see if I can do the magic turn here. Yeah, that goes in. And uh, yeah, it just goes in there and it's held in with two screws and away you go. So yeah, um, that was the uh, resistor here at the end of the coupler, right? There's one straight shoe section, one coupled section, and then a, a trap. Anyway, that's the video for the day.